Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video on the tropics. And so in this video, we'll be talking about two marked disturbances across the North Atlantic, uh, one of which is a little bit recent yesterday. And so that one is actually likely to bring impacts to the Windward Islands. And so we'll be talking about all of that in this update video. And so before I go into details with these systems, please do subscribe and tap the notification bell so that you never miss an important update video on the tropics. And to show your support for the channel, you can leave a like on this video. All right, and let us go ahead and start out with what the National Hurricane Center is showing. And we're seeing here that we have these two systems. One is in orange, one is in red. The one in orange, which is a tropical wave designated as Invest 91L, is given a 40% chance to develop. But of course, it is a recently identified disturbance and so uh for that reason the chance isn't immediately going to be very high but if conditions are expected to be conducive to enable development and the system is showing signs of organization then the chance will increase and then we have that other tropical wave a bit to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands and that wave is given a high 70% chance to develop into a tropical cyclone during the next five days however uh, conditions will start to get a bit unfavorable as we head to the latter part of this week so uh, it has limited time to start to get itself together out there and then as we go ahead and take a look at the select imagery of these systems now this is invest 91 l uh, it is not looking so good it's looking a little bit uh disheveled here it looked quite better yesterday but if we have the system really getting itself together the chance will continue to increase for us to see development but regardless it is going to be approaching the windward islands as we head to the midweek and and will be bringing impacts there that heavy rainfall maybe some gusty winds as well so uh, if you're there please take the necessary precautions and stay safe and I would say areas such as Martinique, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Trinidad, Tobago and even Barbados uh, should all be keeping an eye on this disturbance here for impacts and so even though impacts might not be too major uh, they could still be significant in the various areas so please guys ensure that you're keeping an eye on the system as time goes by and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated as well so let's go ahead and move on to the satellite imagery of our other tropical disturbance here and we're seeing that it has quite a bit of activity associated with it but it's lacking organization right now so as time goes by we'll see if this one really gets itself together before conditions start to get unfavorable for us to see any further development of it and so uh, let's go ahead and now take a look at current conditions across the region and so we're starting out with the wind shear and so the red indicates that there is unfavorable wind shear uh, that is when we have those very strong upper level winds that interfere with tropical cyclone development because they help to displace activity and overall they prevent growth and intensification of storms and then we have the neutral wind shear and also very impactful but what is ideal for up Optimum development of these systems is uh, favorable wind shear and that is when upper level winds are not strong out there are not impacting systems and so that is what tropical cyclones love but in the vicinity of 91 l we're seeing that there is a bit of unfavorable wind shear however as the system makes its way towards the west it could encounter more favorable conditions and intensify and then in terms of the sea surface temperatures here we are seeing that uh temperatures are in fact conducive in the vicinity of 91 l we just need at least 26 26 and a half degrees celsius and uh we see 29 30 degrees within the vicinity of the system here and i also want to point out that some areas are actually starting to cool i mean we're in the month of october now and so uh as we approach the end of this year and the end of the hurricane season we will start to see cooling across the atlantic basin and so that is the case right now for the gulf coast of the u.s along some sections as well as the southeastern coast of the U.S. And even looking at the sea surface temperature anomaly map here, we're seeing here that we're seeing those blues in those regions. The blues indicate that we have temperatures below normal. White means that things are pretty much average or normal. And then we have the yellow going to the orange and red that is indicating that uh, we have above normal temperatures. And we're seeing that we're starting to have that cooling across some areas, which is inevitable. I mean, uh, we're approaching the end of this hurricane season slowly, but 
but surely. But that doesn't mean we won't see any more major storms. But in terms of the ensemble members here, let's go ahead and take a look at what they're expecting for both of these systems. We're going to be starting out with the Euro tracks. And so uh, we're seeing that they're expecting that the tropical wave near the vicinity of the Cabo Verde Islands will will be intensifying and becoming a tropical storm. We see some members expecting that we will be having that uh, tropical wave 91L making its way across the Caribbean, but not really intensifying much. Majority of the members here are not expecting that this will become a tropical storm. But I mean, things can change, so we just have to keep watching the system as time goes by. And as for the GFS Ensemble members, we have uh, quite a bit of them that are available for that wave near the Cabo Verde Islands, and development of it. Meanwhile, we have quite a few members as well available for 91L and we're seeing that they're expecting that this is going to be uh, making that general westward motion and we have some of these members here expecting some intensification of this system and I mean this is not impossible because we just need conditions to be quite conducive and once they are then we will definitely be seeing intensification of the tropical wave but again it is going to be bringing impacts to the windward islands uh, as we approach the midweek and so guys thus far in this hurricane season we've not seen a whole lot but we've had some major cyclones we've had Ian recently and we've also had Fiona and other systems such as Earl that really caused quite a bit of damage across some areas but as of right now the strongest storm of the season is Fiona and you might be wondering why is it Fiona when uh, Ian had stronger winds. Well, Ian is the strongest in terms of maximum sustained winds, but the overall strongest system is ranked by the minimum central pressure. And for Fiona, it was 932 millibars. Meanwhile, for Ian, it was 936 millibars. So Fiona had a lower pressure, and that is why it is ranked as the current strongest cyclone of this hurricane season. But of course, the damage done by Fiona is not anything near as significant as Ian because that cyclone completely and some areas across Florida, especially uh, areas that were in the direct path of the system there and uh, damages are just absolutely crazy there as well as uh, the fatalities. Unfortunately, the number is increasing, but let's hope that we won't see such a storm for the rest of this hurricane season, but that is not impossible. And many persons look at the tropical wave 91L and might be uh, a bit concerned because Ian originated from a similar spot. But uh, the origin spot doesn't determine how strong the system will be. It is the conditions up ahead for it that will be the determinant of how strong it'll be. And uh, models are not really going hard on this becoming something major or even heading into the Gulf of Mexico. So that general westward track is expected of it. And we could see some intensification. This might become a tropical cyclone. But of course, that is not guaranteed to happen. So only time will tell, guys. But of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated on what what is happening across the tropics and so that is really it for now and if you have any questions you can leave them down in the comments and you can also share your thoughts there and remember to always be weatherwise.